Good evening. Glad you're here. This, uh, this message may not mean a lot to some of you, but I, we were singing that song right there, and, and, it, and it said that in the song, in the lyric of that song, it says, Calm every doubt and fear. You know, I, I want y'all to know that there's, there's times in my life that, uh, that I feel like fear dominates me. Y'all may not understand that, but I, it, that's just the way it is. You know, there's times that I get overwhelmed that, that maybe this would happen or, and it would, it might, things might go the, the wrong way or that might happen and things go the wrong way. And I, and I, I get to the point that I'm thinking, what if I don't listen to the Lord and don't preach the word that I'm supposed to preach on the day that people comes, that that might be the only day that they come into church and, and that's the only day that they're going to hear about the, uh, the, the cross of, of Calvary. And it's the, the day that they were supposed to be saved. And I'm thinking, what if I don't do this right? Or what if I don't do that right? And I, I, this is going to be a message that y'all be able to beat me up on because, because I know that I, that I tell you all the time that, that, that fear and worrying is a sin. And it is, and I know that. But I'm just pouring out my heart to you tonight because, uh, because a lot of times we feel like that that we're beyond struggles and we feel like at times that we're, we're beyond trials uh, because a lot of times whenever trials come into our path, we feel like that, that you know, we're just going to deal with them and go on. And, you know, and a lot of times it doesn't happen like that. And, and there's challenges of, of being the pastor of this church, challenges that, that never stop. It's challenges that, that, that goes on and on. And it was, man, I'm just thankful to God that he called me he called me to, to be here and he called me to, to be the pastor of this church and it was what he wanted me to do and it was and I believe that, that today as I look back, I believe that that was God's calling for my life and it was God's plan. And I and I realize that, you know, and, and it's I believe that it's God's call for me to, to deal with the with the sickness that, that comes along with being a with being a pastor and, and death that comes around the corner and it and of course right now we've seen in our in our church family this just this calendar year we've had several people that's that that's went on to be with the Lord and it and it just it gets to the point that you're thinking man there's there's ministries around every corner and I and I look at it different than a lot of people does I, I was in the, at the hospital yesterday and I and and it was sickness all around but it, but I look at it as man there's a ministry that you have this this opportunity you know and and the counseling that we that we that goes along with being a pastor is things that I didn't know that that God was going to call me to do you know and it, it goes through all ages and it and it's something that's tough and you look around and you see all the buildings and all the things that that God has has entrusted us that we that we take care of and that we do and all these things are just are just added things that it's just part of the calling that God has us do and and also you know now we're dealing with the time of the year that there's there's weddings everywhere you turn and those weddings it comes on and it's just such a such a blessing to see them start their life and everything be excited and everybody and ever not only are they excited but the people that, that comes along with that and being part of it all the family members and the church family and 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 all the people that that whenever you're standing up there as a pastor and you're and you're you're talking to them the couple that's going to be married every human being is in there and they listen to every word and hold on to every word that you say and I'm thinking man this is a lot of responsibility and, and you know when you you do a funeral and everybody listens to every word are you presenting that person in the right kind of way but I had a gentleman that asked me asked me uh, Monday he told me he said I want you to know he said uh, he said uh, I'd like for you to do my funeral whenever I die and, that, and that's that's common very common for that to happen because at the funeral I did Monday there was five people that came up to me and and they asked me would I would I do their funeral but this one person that came up to me to do asked me if I would do his funeral he's one of those type of people that he comes to every funeral every visitation and he stays all the way up to the service and he always leaves and I've and I've met I've I've witnessed to him and talked to him and this is what he always tells me. He'll say, "You know I don't believe the way you do, preacher." He said, "You know that I don't I don't believe 
not anywhere close to the way you do. And, and, I, and I told him, I said, so in other words, you're going to ask me to preach your, fa your funeral knowing that you're dying and that you're going to hell. He said, I don't believe that I'm going to hell. I said, oh, yes, you're going to hell because you, you have not accepted Christ as your Lord and Savior. He said, yeah, but I believe there'll just be a place for me somewhere. And I told him, I said, it's called hell. And I've known this man for, for many and many a years, but I'm talking about every, every time, every time I do, a, I, I, I do that, he's at every one of them, there's all this community around, and he's at all of them, and he always tells me, I want you to do, do my funeral. And I, I finally told him Monday, I told him, I said, you know I'm not going to lie for you. He said, what do you mean? I said, I'm not going to lie and tell your family that you're going to heaven whenever you have told me that you're not. I said, I'm not going to lie for you. He said, just what are you going to do? I said, I'm going to comfort your family. I'm going, to, I'm, going to, I'm going to be there for your family. I said, but I'm not going to lie to them. I said, I can talk about you being a good old boy, but good old boys go to hell. And, and, I, and I realized that that's just part of all the things that comes along with, with being a pastor that, I, that a lot of times I don't think about those. And Jesus said in Luke 12, 48, he said, whosoever much is given, much is required. And I realize that that's part of a requirement that, that I present the word and it's, and God is, I don't know if y'all noticed, but God has blessed me and gave me a, a, man, there's people, there's pastors all over the world that would love to be y'all's pastor. They would fight to be your pastor. They would fight to have what we have. They would, oh, they would give anything to have it because they, there's a lot of pastors that's out there that's got, got 15 or 20 people and they would just fight to have, have even a, a Wednesday night service as many people as here. They would love to have that. But, but what, when there's much given, there's much required. And there comes time whenever I, I have to tell my family, I have to tell my family, hey, you got to give me a minute. You got to give me a minute, and I've got to I've got to be on my own, and I've got to go, and I've got to I've got to get my heart right with the Lord. I've got to I've got to have my quality time, men. I want you to pay attention to me, ladies. I want you to pay attention. There comes a time in your life that you've got to just say, "Wait a minute, wait a minute, I, man, God, I, I need you right now. I need you more than anything in the world, and and I need to get quiet with you." Why would we feel like that we didn't, we didn't need that? Because Jesus, he would withdraw himself from people and he would go and he would get down and he'd pray to the Father. And I, I realize as the more that I've been studying about Jesus, the more I realize how weak I am, but how strong Jesus was because he had that relationship with his heavenly Father. And I, I want y'all to know that I, I go into my place. I go into my place to get close to the Lord. And whenever I go in, I'm defeated. Man, I'm beat up and I feel like it. I'm, that I, I feel like it. I'm tired. I feel like it. I'm broken. I feel like it. I've, I've been wandering around, wondering, God, what do you want me to do next? God, what is it, what is it that, I, that, that I'm supposed to do in order to serve you? And you know something that I've noticed every time that I, that I come out of that, of that time with the Lord, I, I go from wondering and I come out a warrior. I come out realizing how good God truly is. And how it, God just, He makes us fresh. And He makes us new. And He calls us to, to be His, His children. I come out excited knowing that my Savior is always there listening to my prayers. He's always there. And it makes me want to go and fight even more for the cause of Christ whenever I leave him and I'm like, whoo, man, that felt so good. And God, why did I, why did I not come to you the way I was supposed to in the first place? I don't know about y'all, but I'm going to tell you, there's times that the times is tough. There's times that we, that we wonder, are we doing the right thing? Is, are we having our, our calling and doing what we're supposed to do? Every time Landon chooses a song, he's wondering, is that song the right song? Well, it ended up being because, because the Lord has calmed every doubt and fear in my life. But he's not going to do that without me calling on him. I sit here and I think about all the people, Brother Gary uh, let me know 
today that he wasn't going to be there. He had a, had a minor surgery. I think about Miss Barbara's. Hopefully that she's going to uh, go and get a great report. And I look at all of you that's in here and every one of us, we've got doubts and fears that creeps into our life. And then I sat here and I listened to John and every word he said was, thank you, Lord. Thank you for my church family. Thank you, Lord, for my family. Thank you, Lord. And man, that's exactly what it's all about, to just thank him and praise him and give him the honor and glory that we're supposed to be doing. Man, to get excited and stay excited every day. Matthew eleven twenty eight 28 says, Jesus said, I want you to come unto me. All you at labor and heavy laden. He said, I'm going to give you rest. That's where we're at. We've got to get things right between us and the Lord. We've got to make sure that whenever we're fighting and in those tough times in our life, that, that the Lord just, man, it, he shows himself to us. See, I want y'all to turn to Philippians chapter 4, and I'm going to start reading in verse 4 because, because whenever, whenever I get close to the Lord, the next thing you know, I, man... He will always renew me. He'll always give me a fresh start, no matter what. The Bible says in, in Philippians 4, 4, he says, Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. And, and listen to what verse 5 said. He said, Let your, your moderation be known unto all men that the Lord is at hand. Let your, let your excessiveness, let everything that you do, uh, make sure that you're, that you're motivated, that you're gracious, and let that be known to every person that you come around, that, that the Lord is at hand. Because I don't know if y'all noticed, but matter of fact, J.D. made a comment today. He said, he said uh, you know, brother, he said, we're already planning on later on and months and years out and and. We don't know if the Lord is going to come back today or going to come back tomorrow. We don't know whenever he's going to come back. But I'll tell you this, he's coming back. Amen. And the thing about it is, is he, he may come back for one of us long before we thought we was ready. So I get to this point. He says right here, verse, verse 6 says this. Miss Betty will appreciate this because it, it says, Be careful for nothing or don't be anxious or don't you be worrying about anything. Miss Betty, you can preach to me about this right now because I'm telling you, there's times in my life that I will see people that's lost. And just like that man, I've not since Monday, I've not been able to get him off my mind. He's been on my mind, and if I told if I told y'all his name, most every one of y'all know him. And you know something? He's a good man. He's a man that's probably not going to cheat anybody in this world, but his heart's not right with Jesus. And all I can see is that thought in my mind. Well, Brother Steve, you've, you've shared the Lord with him every time you've come around him. You you must be nice to him because he asked you to do his funeral whenever he could ask somebody else. I, I, I get that. But all I want to do is see one more person saved. Just one more person. And then whenever they get saved, I can move on to that next one more person. There's not a finishing place with salvation. There's not a finishing place on when God calls you to, to, to minister to people. There's not a finishing place. Never is. Be careful for nothing, but with everything, with prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. I've been letting God know, Lord, I want you to, I want you to convict that man's heart. I want you to give me an opportunity to see that man again and, and, and minister to him and, and hopefully he'll be able to see the light. Because Jesus is the light. In, in him there's no darkness at all. And the Bible says in verse 7, it says, And then, then the peace of God which passes all of our understanding shall keep and guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. That that makes me so feel so good whenever I read about the peace of God. There's a lot of times that people's walking around without any peace and they don't know the peace and love of God. So I get to this point because because after we know about the, the, the peace and the love of Jesus Christ, then we then we've got to focus on it. Verse five, verse eight says this right here. He said, Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true. Whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure. All these things are, are good things. 
good things, of things that's just and honest and pure, whatsoever things that are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report. And if any of these virtues or any of these moral standards that, that God has put in front of us, if any of these are in you, then you will praise and think on these things. It's time that we think on all the things, all the things that are good, that are true, that are trustworthy, all these things. Because I'm going to tell you, we, we don't live in a trustworthy world right now. We don't live in a trustworthy society. Used to, used to, people might be lost, but they wasn't going to cheat you. They wasn't going to stand right in your face and lie to you. They were going to make sure that they respected people. I'm going to tell you, there's not a lot of respect that's going on in this world today. I know that we're sitting in the, in the Bible belt. We're able to hear about the Word of God week in and week out, but if you go to some of these places that's in the cities, you're not seeing, you're not seeing the, the Bible being thumped the way we thump it around here. You're not seeing people hear and know the Word of God. You're not seeing people understand how important it is that they come to know Jesus. And that's sad to know that all over the place that there's people who are lost and and they're not being told. Their children are not learning about Jesus. Their, their youth are not learning about Christ and about what it really means to have a relationship with Him. There's a reason that we bring our ch children and grandchildren to church is because we want to give them an opportunity to come to know the Lord. And then if they don't come to know the Lord, we want to beat it in them until they do. You know why? Because we don't want our families to, to not know Jesus. We want them to know him. We want them to love him. We want them to become, to become close to him. And that's whenever peace happens. And peace happens whenever you're serving the Lord. I'll tell you, peace happens. You may be tired. You may be overwhelmed at times. But peace happens whenever your relationship is close to God. And I, and I want y'all to know I'm ashamed at times. I just wander off. It's not, I don't know if y'all have ever, have y'all ever seen a kid that, that, that they're, they're all in on what's going on. They may be in school or whatever, they, and, and they're all in to what's going on, that activity or that game that, that, that's happening. And then you let just a little lull happen, a little lull, and next thing you know, that kid's doing this. That was Steve. That's me. That kid was looking around and seeing something, and then, and then walk over there and, and start playing with something else whenever all they were doing was giving you instructions. That's the, way, that's the way things are going now. We've got to make certain that we let our kids know the importance. And all of you have grandbabies or, or babies of your own or people that you, that you influence. It, it's time. It's time. I think that right now it, the, the field's white with harvest right now. I believe it with all my heart. Landon, he, he sent, a, sent that message to me Sunday. Are we having a baptism? It just... Oh, it just kills me whenever I say no. And I realize, man, I want more people to be saved. I, want, I looked in here Sunday and I seen all the brand new people that's in here. There's, there's people that comes in here week in and week out and they're lost, but they keep on coming back. They keep on coming back because we love on them. They keep on coming back because we meet them at the door. They come in their first one or two times and they, they wait till right at 11 o'clock and they zoom in and they sit down and boy, they zoom out. But then the next thing you know, they're staying a little bit later. They're wanting a little bit more. They're wanting that hug or that handshake. They're wanting a little bit more of that word. They're wanting to know what we've got. But I'm going to tell you, we've got to have it ourselves. We've got to have that love. We've got to have that, that crush, that crush on Jesus. I don't know if y'all know it, but, but if you look back the first time you had your first girlfriend or your first boyfriend, you, you, you had a crush on them and you was crazy about them. That probably wasn't the one that you ended up marrying. It probably wasn't the one that you was with. But at that time, you thought, I love you and all that stupid stuff that we say. And then God puts you in a situation to where you're at the age and the understanding that you truly know what it means to love somebody. And you realize that the only reason that you was loving them in the first place is because God gave you that kind of love. He implants it in our heart to give us love. Yo, know, I realized just as much as anything. I sent a, I sent a picture to my uh, to my wife today, about three or four years ago. Three or four years ago, maybe even longer. We went and we took a picture. 
she and I took a picture. Uh, we took the kids, and there was a all the it was all the cotton was out in the field, and it was so pretty. And I, I called called my buddy that had that cotton field. And I said, "Hey man, do you mind if we if we go down there and we take pictures in the cotton field? Because for some reason my wife wants pictures of us in the cotton field. Y'all would be the same way if you knew there's a cotton field right down the road. So we took the kids' picture and all that stuff. And and Carrie said we just got out of church and we went straight down there. And and whenever we did. You know, I realized how far I've come, too. I just want y'all to know that. We went, and Carrie and I got that picture, and I thought, man, me and Carrie, we, I've aged a lot in four or five years, by the way, just so if y'all hadn't noticed it. But uh, she hadn't. But, uh, but I, I sent her that picture, and I said, wow, we was a good-looking couple, but this is how lazy I am and how lazy I can be at times. So I made fun of myself, and she said, oh, you look good. But at that time, I had a tie that I had wore at church here to preach, and that tie struck me about right there. It did. I didn't notice it. All I knew is that I, I took that tie, and it was tied up, and I put it on. I didn't pay no more attention until I looked at my goofy picture when I sent it to her, but I just looked at it and I thought, boy, Carrie, you're so pretty. I'm going to send you this picture and you, I've got it on my phone. Y'all can see it. And first thing you're going to think is, man, stupid, fix your tie. But I, I sent that to her and after I did, I was looking at it and I told Carrie, I said, I said, wow. I cannot believe I had that tie. So just so y'all know, since then, have y'all noticed that I've been tying my ties and they've been where they're supposed to be? And now this is what she tells me. She says, you look good in your tie. <laughs> and I realize that it only takes a little bit of confidence to touch people. Just a little bit. And I, I want to get to this scripture because, because it's got it's to touch our heart. Listen to what Colossians 3.15 says. It says, and let. I, I want y'all to realize that word let means a lot. If you let peace of God rule in your heart, it's going to change your life. If you let Jesus Christ touch your heart, it's going to change your life. If you let the Spirit of God humble you whenever you're, whenever you're up here uh, thinking you've got everything done, if we let the peace of God rule in our hearts, which we're called in one body and be thankful, when we let that peace of God rule in our hearts in one body, next thing you know, we're all worshiping together. We're all praising God. We're all, we're all thankful. And it says, let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom. And what happens? That means that we'll be teaching and admonishing one another, lifting up each one uh, another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. Matter of fact, Jeff, whenever you prayed a while ago, there's a word that you used to explain those songs. I, I think, I, I, it, I don't know if it was psalms or it was words, but you was, whenever you prayed a while ago, did you pay attention to what you was praying? I don't remember, all right? Well, whatever it was, I was listening, and it was uh, the word hymns or, or, or message. What was it? Poetry. Oh, Jeff, I loved it. He said, as we sing these songs of worship and poetry, and man, I thought that was so sweet coming out of his mouth. I couldn't believe I couldn't remember it, but that, that meant something because every one of these words that we sing, this is what this Bible is talking about, about all the songs of hymns and praise and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your heart. It tells us that as we sing these words, they should just roll out of our tongue and think, man, that sounds so beautiful. That sounds so beautiful. Now, I'm about done, but I want y'all to listen to this right here because here is where I want to be. Here's where I want all of us to be. Y'all ready to listen? To get everything wound up in a, in a ball and, and we say, man, this is what I want us to, to do as a church. This is what I want us to do as individuals. It says, and whatsoever you do in words and deeds... Do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father by Him. The reason I, I wanted to read that, because everything we do, if we think about how God is going to be honored and glorified, no matter what we're going through, whether it's a time, time, whether it's a good time, if we give Him praise through it, in every word and every deed that comes out of our mouth, if we give God His rightful place in our life, then what will end up happening? Man, 
we'll have some glorious times in our life. So if anything is going to dominate us, we don't need to let it be fear. We should have the Spirit of God dominate us. We should have the love of the Lord dominate us. And ask Him, say, Lord, calm every doubt and fear. Because I'm telling you something. Every one of these songs of poetry, that sounded so good, are songs of worship that come, should come out of our heart and out of our mind. And we should share them with people. We should share them to where people says, man, that blessed my heart. That blessed my heart. Let's pray. God, I come to you and I pray, Lord, that you'll calm all of our doubts and fears, Lord. I pray that you would, you would get us on fire for you. I pray, God, that we would see an excitement in each and every one of us. Lord, I want to tell you, forgive me, God, whenever I, I do kind of get burdened down and get weighed down with, with old cares of these world. Because, God, it, it's, it's here. And Lord, I just pray for the ones that are lost, Lord. I pray that you'll touch their heart. I pray that you'll be a Savior to them, Lord. I pray that your Holy Spirit will start convicting people. God, I pray that you convict our children over there and our youth. I pray for you to convict us, us adults, Lord. It may not be for salvation. It may be for faithfulness. God, I pray that, we've, that we're worthy of your calling. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Love y'all.